Hey guys, welcome back to the Tegel YouTube channel. Today we're joined again by Mr. Matt Howard and his lovely Joe Yaris that sat behind us. Um, as you can see in front of us, we're going to be upgrading your front brakes. Um, big shout out to EBC who've sent us uh, their two piece floating replacement discs and a set of RPX front pads. Um, this has sort of been in the making for a while, hasn't it? I think you're quite in the need for some new brakes. Yeah, so my car's on uh, about 11,000 miles an hour. I've done six or seven track days in it. Um, the standard brakes are fantastic, but the discs are starting to show some heavy signs of wear now. They're starting to crack a little bit, starting to get deposits on them, etc., etc. It's time for new discs. So EBC have kindly sent these because the standard ones are extremely expensive. That's the trade-off for how good the standard brakes are. So the factory discs from Toyota are around about £600 per side. So when you factor in the pads as well, you're looking at easy £1,300, £1,400 for you know, a front brake setup plus fitting if that's what you're going to do. So um, these are cheaper by a good yeah. amount. So these retail at £768, including VAT. So that makes it about what 370 quid per side but you do get both of them for your 768 pounds so it's almost half price of buying them from toyota mm. um, and there are other benefits as well uh, they are lighter will be weighing the disc that comes off the car as well as one of these so we'll tell you exactly how much lighter as well as that they are um, anodized in the middle which makes them more durable they won't corrode that's something that they are corroded a little bit on the bells on there and also you can buy the rotors separately which you can't do with Toyota um, so when it does come to changing discs again it'll be uh, even more cost effective um, as well as the discs we've got some RPX pads so these are their pure track pads I've got RP1s on there at the moment they've been brilliant so I'm really excited to try the RPXs out they're like a step up aren't they the RP RPX yeah. are sort of the ultimate compound that EBC do yep that's right they've been they've been fantastic on track the last great they've been not even as dusty as the standard pads to be honest which is all round winners they're not noisy either mega so I guess we'll unbox it and um, take a closer look at what's inside the boxes mm -hmm. okay let's go Yeah, so we've got them out of the box. First things first, are these the same size as the OEM? Yeah, of course. So they're a direct replacement for the standard discs on your car. Um, these are, again, obviously a direct replacement for the standard pads. These are not R90 compliant, so they are just for track use. Um, you're not supposed to use them on the road. That's you're what definitely not going to drive home today. Definitely right? didn't drive here on similar pads today. <laughs> um, so this, like, this might be really dumb and everyone on YouTube might laugh at me, but these are black and they look dead cool. Yeah. Are they going to stay black? So they'll stay black um, everywhere where the pad doesn't touch. And it's called the swept area. So anywhere the pad touches, it is going to rub this black coating off and take it uh, down to bare metal. But that's good because everywhere that the uh, pad doesn't touch isn't going to rust like what's like the discs that are on there now especially this uh, this part of the the disc which is called the bell um this is anodized so this is um going to be really corrosion resistant um so that's again going to stop it corroding so we've got um so the, the, these are floating just like the standard ones are so basically as the disc disc expands it can expand without creating any stress between this and the middle uh, the, the bell itself so it's much better for you know judder and things like that and just general coping with the abuse on track um, they are they are uh, handed they're sided so we've got um, an L and an R on there and that if that's um, dictated by the way these grooves go but also the veins inside they they are sort of angled and curved in a way to make it throw out the hot air and just reject that heat from the brakes as efficiently as possible. So, so next time, once this, um, this bell's on, you should be able to unclip this and then you can just replace That's the actual right. disc. So it becomes even cheaper. 
yeah. next time. And instructions for that are on the back of the box as well. Yeah, that was so. good actually. I, as we're about sustainability and stuff, mm. as you've seen our other videos, I kind of like how they put the instructions on the back and yeah. done away with paper. So yeah, and I always love it. Thanks EBC, we've got two stickers in our uh, pad box. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, so moving on to the pads, we've got a really nice thick back plate. This is something that helps um, deflect heat away from, well, insulate the rest of the braking system, things like the fluid, the seals and the calipers, things like that, insulates it from the heat that the, the pad face is gonna um, generate on the disc. And as well as that, we've got um, really detailed um, bedding in instructions, which is important for pads like this because how you bed them in depends, you know, has a big um, effect on how they last for the rest of their life. So um, that's really good. And it's, you know, I, d I did the same with the RP1 pads that's in it now, and they've been fantastic, no problems at all. How long could you expect those to last, or does it just really depend on how you use the car? Yeah, I mean, it does. It does. It depends on how many track days you do and how you brake as well, because there's a lot of, um, you know, you see a lot of people that are new to track days and they'll brake early and they'll brake for a long time thinking they're being kind on the system. But actually, you're just making a lot of heat in there and a lot of wear. Um, if you brake late and hard like you should, then they last a really long time. They've been in the car now for, I don't know, probably um, five or six thousand miles. But in that time, and they've still got plenty of life in them. But in that in that time, they've probably done four or five track days as well, which you know is a sort of the equivalent of a good few thousand miles each time. So, for example, you can knacker the standard Toyota pads in a day if you you know if you're going out for a lot of laps, um, you can you can wear them out in a day. Amazing. So I'm going to hand it over to Matt now. He's going to talk you through fitting them to your car. Alright guys, so now that the wheel is off, I'm going to take the brake pads out to start with. It's really easy on these, um, on these four pot calipers. So there's two pins, I'll turn the wheel over to show you. So if we're just looking here, we can see how it works. We've got two retaining pins that slide in like that. We've got a little locking pin here. And then this spring here clips onto both pins and pushes both of the pads down into it, stops them rattling about. So to remove it, we just take this, pad out, this pin out the back like that. Just lay the components down somewhere so you can know exactly where they've come from. Pull the pins out. Now sometimes you might need to knock that out with a hammer and a punch. If it's been in there a long time, this car's still pretty new and it's had plenty of brake pad changes so they're pretty free. So that's the top pin. Uh, we can pull this clip off now. And we've got this little arrow on here. It points down and that's the direction that the disc is going to go. So that's easy to remember. And that one just pulls out as well. So once we've done that, we can just, in theory, just push the pistons back in. Now you might need a, a lever or something gently to push it back in. You might have a, a fancy tool to do it. Um, with these, you should just be able to pull it back. If I move around here, should just be able to pull it back with my hands because they're not, uh, I'd say that they're pretty new. So I can push the pistons back just like that them out like that so there's the old pads so these are the rp1s so still holding up starting to show a few little cracks but nothing you wouldn't expect from from track days um but there's still a fair bit of life left in them they've been fantastic the discs however um like we can see in the little cutaways here uh they are starting to show some cracks so um if we go back it's starting to show like little micro cracks here um and then just general pad deposits you can see building up and grooves and things like that uh, nothing's a massive concern and it's not unsafe or anything like that but it's just starting to show a bit of wear and when it's getting hot it's, it's, it's lasting less and less laps before I'm starting to feel that pulsing through the pedal and starting to think I'm really sort of making the brakes unhappy here so for me it's time to change them so so that's how we get a pad out and then to get the disc off we're just going to undo these two 17 mil bolts here and before I do that I'm just going to get something to tie the caliper up to the spring because what we don't want to do is leave the uh, caliper hanging on the brake line. Um, it's, it's, I, see, I see people doing it all the time and it's, it's really bad. So if you're one of those people that does it, just stop, stop doing it. Because um, you're going to 
risk damaging that and then you're not going to find out until you try and press the brake pedal for the first time and um, bad things could happen. Right, so like I said, make sure that you hook this caliper up somewhere. Take, don't leave it hanging on the uh, on the brake hose, just like that. Somewhere where it's not going to get scratched, and it's not going to uh, it's not going to put any stress on anything else. Now, Toyota don't actually uh, use any bolts to hold their disc on, so you should be able to just pull it off. This one's stuck to the hub a little bit, so we're just going to have to knock it off. But, um, but otherwise, if you're on different applications, BMW use an Allen key bolt, Honda use uh, crosshead little screws on there, um, and that's it. But Toyota just have the wheel clamping the disc on. Right. So there's the disc off. Now there are these two little bolt holes that you can thread bolts into to push it off the hub, but I haven't had much luck with those in the past, so. Um, so now that we've got it off, we can see, so all the bits that are painted black, on, uh, sorry, that are coated black on the EBC discs are not on this Toyota disc. You see how rusty it's got. It's got rusty where the pad doesn't sweep on here. This bell here is also made of aluminium like the EBC one, but it's corroded. Um, again, it's not corroded to the point where it's, it's anywhere close to failing. It's just something that's going to look a lot better when we put the EBC discs on. So let's compare them to the EBC discs. Let's... Uh, get them weighed, see what the differences are. Right, here we are in the Tegawa Logistics Centre where they've got some scales to weigh the discs. So we're gonna pop the standard one on first. So this is after a bit of wear, but I doubt it'll have taken that down. So nine and a quarter kilos, 9.26. We'll put the EBC disc on, brand new, with extra weight of a sticker as well. There we go, a little bit lighter. So I suspect there'd be a fair bit lighter than a, than a new Toyota one as well. Um, and that's a brilliant place to take weight from. This is rotating mass, so everything, you know, this is what uh, the engine's got to spin up before it spins the car, before it speeds the car up. Um, and it's also unsprung as well, so it will help the suspension react faster. So, yep, all round. Um, nothing but benefits really for reducing weight there. Uh, we're back at the car now, um, but before we put the disc on, we want to clean the hub. So this car is only 18 months old, but we can see there's already some corrosion around the hub. So it's going to get a wire brush, clean up some of that. And then what that'll do is make sure that the disc fits nice and straight and flat onto the hub. Um, that stops any sort of anything, any build up here, you know, making the disc sit funny or something like that. And anything like that is just going to increase a load of judder, uh, induce a load of judder into the, you know, when you, when you press the actual brakes. So. We're going to clean it up with a wire brush and then we're going to set the disc on. Okay, so the disc just pushes on. Um, it, just beware, it can just start to move and pull off under its own accord, so don't, uh, don't just leave it hanging there. Um, we're going to put the caliper straight back on. That'll trap the disc, keep it exactly where we want it. Right, so I've just done these two bolts up by hand. Don't gun them up, do tighten them up properly. They are brakes at the end of the day. So the proper torque setting for these is 107 Newton meters, 107. And that's it. So those are the only two bolts we actually need to do on these, on these ones. So another thing I'm gonna do before I put the pads back in, as you can see inside, there's a bit of build up. Um, so just to make sure that the pads can freely move around. I'm just going to give it a quick scrub out with the, with the same brush. This is like a really nice soft one. It's not really a stiff one, so it's not going to do any, any damage to the rubber seals or any harm, anything like that. So just clean it up. Just like that. Uh, before we put the pads in, I'm just going to apply just a tiny bit of copper grease just to these two points on here. You can sort of see that they stick up a bit further than the rest. So these are the points that are going to be contacting the, the caliper. 
So that's just going to sort of minimise squeal and make sure that it's all moving nice and free. We don't need a lot at all, just a little bit on both points either side of the pad. That's it, so sliding in nice and free. And then um, what we can do is just push these two pistons back in and then we can fit the other pad in. So that's it, once those pads are slid in, we slide the, I'll usually what I'll do is I'll slide the bottom pin in. Um, I'm just gonna give these a quick clean up and I'll slide them in and then we'll put the clip on. So now we've got the pads in, we're gonna put the pins in. I've given these a bit of a clean up um, with some emery cloth. Uh, again, just gonna pop a little bit of grease just to stop it seizing, because these are steel pins into aluminum calipers. So you do want just a little tiny bit of grease, not that much. So what I'll do is I'll pop the bottom one in first, like that, nice and free. Just pop that one in, but not very far. And what we do, we take the clip, hook it on that bottom bit. There's a little, I'll take it off. There's a little hook just there. Hook it on there like that. And then you have to sort of lift it up and push it on and it grips onto the, the pads just there like that. So we want to try and get it in the middle and we can slide this top pin through like that. So the only thing left to do now is put this little um, clip that retains the pins where they are. So you can use it to sort of rotate the pins. So bottom one just goes in like that. Top one like that. Try not to bend it too much and then just pop it into place there like that. And that's it, that's as easy as it is to change the brakes on a, a GI Yaris. So we'll do the other side and then uh, we'll get embedded in and uh, head out to the track. Okay, so we've got the pads in, got the discs on, as you've just seen. How easy was it, Matt? Uh, really easy. Uh, these, this is a job that anybody can do, but, big but, it is very important to get it right. It is your brakes, it is a critical safety thing. So, talk the bolts up properly, make sure everything's happy, put the pads in the right way around, things like that. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's really easy and really fast. It took what? I would say you could do each side in 15 minutes per side, something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it all fits great, it looks great, it looks loads better than the standard disc did, all corroded and cracked and heat spotted and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, I'm keen to get out on track and see what they're like. Amazing. So yeah, once again, a big thank you to EBC Brakes for supplying us with the RPX pads and the floating discs. It's really appreciated. Go check out our other GR Yaris videos on our channel. We've got these actually listed on our website now. We do have a set in stock. So go and check them out. And thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one.